Joining me now, Democratic Congressman Matt Cartwright, member of the Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Representative Cartwright, always nice to see you. Thanks for joining me. Okay, I'm going to make sure that your mic gets hooked up, and I hope by the time I end this question it's all hooked up. But should, sir, there you are, and will Democrats Thanks. participate in the select committee? What do you think? Well, I, I want to say it's, uh, it's certainly uh, frustrating and disappointing. Uh, you know, uh, those of us who are freshmen in the, in the Democratic ranks, there are 50 of us, we came to Congress uh, hoping to join a, a, a deliberative, uh, a distinguished body, uh, people who are uh, acting like grown-ups. Uh, we're not seeing that. And it, on, on one level, it's frustrating uh, to, to see a continual... Uh, mentions of Benghazi and uh, can't let it go. But on the other, on the other hand, uh, it's not surprising because uh, look, uh, y y you think about politics, and there's a, a significant portion of the right-wing base uh, that has to be pandered to, has to be fed. And these are folks that uh, have been frustrated in themselves. They haven't heard about the birth certificate in a couple of years. Uh, they haven't heard about uh, plans for construction of a mosque on ground zero for a couple of years. They haven't heard the things that enrage them and infuriate them and bring them out to vote. And that's the big danger, is that these folks will forget to come out and vote against their own economic interests uh, this November. Any wisdom in seeing all of this as an opportunity to get all the information out there and clear the air and move past Benghazi? Well, if you don't think the air has already been cleared after something like 50 hearings, after well, 25,000 documents have been produced, after the Department of Defense estimates that over a million dollars has been spent of taxpayer money looking into this. Don't get me wrong, Alex. This is a tragedy. It was a horrible thing to lose uh, four heroes of our American State Department at Benghazi. Uh, but to try to make this into a political fundraising event, a political pandering tool, uh, it's not right. Uh, and uh, part of me agrees with a lot of the Democrats who are saying we should not even dignify this with our presence uh, with these further hearings they're talking about. How big a mistake was it by the White House to not release the new email that came out this week in the original batch? You know, we were talking about that, and it's, um, uh, it's, it's hard to respond to something like that when you have all of these eyes on you and you're supposed to uh, uh, disgorge and divulge all kinds of documents, and if you forget one and it comes out later, uh, if somebody's going to make a scandal out of that. Uh, my point is, look, if, if they were trying to hide something, if they were trying to cover something up, they never would have re uh, released that piece of paper. So to me, it's just a question mm -hmm. of uh, oversight uh, among all of the flurry of paperwork involved in this ongoing and never-ending investigation. Yeah. I'm curious, as you're out on the campaign trail, does anybody ask you about Benghazi? Do people care? No. It's a beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Uh, people are concerned about getting on with their own lives. They're talking about bettering themselves and getting uh, better jobs and, and getting jobs. You know, we have uh, 2.6 million American families who are uh, struggling because they got cut off of unemployment, long-term unemployment compensation. Uh, Speaker Boehner won't even bring that up for a vote, uh, let alone, let alone uh, push it through. Um, you know, we have uh, a minimum wage that needs to be raised in this country. Uh, Speaker Boehner won't even bring that up for a vote. These are the things that people in Wilkes-Barre and all over northeastern Pennsylvania care about, and they're not being addressed. So it's little hmm. wonder that Congress is held in such low esteem uh, in the districts back I, home. I, I do want to take a look, though, sir, at what's happening inside of Libya, because on Thursday, one of the top intelligence officials in Libya was assassinated. There are gun battles on the streets of Tripoli. Southern Libya, that
has become a virtual terrorist free-for-all. And here's part of a column from the Washington Post editorial board this week about the current state of the country in which they write, the Obama administration and its NATO allies bear responsibility for this mess because, having intervened to help rebels overthrow Gaddafi, they then swiftly exited without making a serious effort to help Libyans establish security and build a new political order. Congress might usefully probe why the administration allowed a country in which it initiated military operations to slide into chaos. In interpret that. Has the U.S. abandoned Libya? No, I don't think so. Uh, obviously, the U.S. Uh, suffered a significant diplomatic setback in Libya. Uh, anybody who has read the unclassified report, the ARB, Accountability Review Board report, that was put together by Ambassador Pickering, uh, Admiral Mullen, uh, uh, will realize the complexity of that situation. Uh, and really, the fact that Ambassador Stevens was an American hero to go into that situation and be attempting to spread American goodwill. Uh, in, in the midst of that kind of a chaos, chaotic situation, uh, people, uh, people are, are overlooking uh, well, what an American hero uh, Ambassador Stevens was and, yeah. uh, and the complexity of the situation there. May, may I ask, though, this whole Benghazi affair, is it indicative of a chronic problem in U.S. foreign policy over the years? Supports get all drummed, support rather gets all drummed up, then the U.S. goes in, maybe helps topple a government, but then everyone forgets about it afterwards, and then we're all shocked when it blows up in the end. I mean, you've, you've got to think Afghanistan after the Soviets, uh, Somalia, Egypt. I mean, is this a problem? Uh, look, uh, Alex, uh, uh, international diplomacy was never easy. Uh, it is not uh, cookie-cutter stuff. Uh, it is, it is uh, a subject that requires intense scrutiny. It's different in every place. Um, and, in fact, uh, that's part of the frustration that I'm feeling is that, you know, before the Benghazi incident, we had something like 13 American embassies attacked uh, throughout the world. Uh, all in different circumstances with different situations. Uh, uh, diplomacy is a very challenging sport. Uh, and for anybody to think it's simple, uh, they're not thinking it through. Representative Matt Cartwright, thank you so much. Good talking with you.